heaven! Hidetaka Miyazaki, creator of Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1 and 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Elden Ring, may be one of the single most influential game developers of my lifetime. He created the subgenre of action RPGs known today as Soulsborne games. These are games that have adopted his basic philosophies. These philosophies include challenging gameplay that requires you to learn from your mistakes, specific and intentional stat allocation, and intense boss fights that push the player to their limits. Because of this, a dedicated community have picked apart these games, studying their every aspect, including which weapons break the game. Now, almost every Soulsborne title gives the player a selection of broken weapons towards the end game or the post game. But in a Souls title, the most broken weapons are ones you can gain early that trivialize the majority of your first playthrough. So that's what this list sets out to accomplish. I present to you the top 10 most broken weapons in Soulsborne games. We'll be covering Demon Souls, the Dark Souls trilogy, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, Code Vein, and Liza P. Also, if you would like to see more top 10 and video game tier lists, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Also, check out exclusive tier lists and perks for my Patreon members. Alright, let's get started. Number 10. Demon Souls was the title that started it all, and more recently we've seen this game be remastered for the launch of the PS5. The most broken weapon in Demon Souls is called the Demon's Brant. The Demon's Brant is a mid to late game weapon that can actually be obtained near the beginning using a bug in the game. You see, if you can bait this enemy to this room until he gets to this point where he's retreating, you then can punch him across this bridge until he reaches these stairs where you can then shove him off. Doing this doesn't just give you his busted armor, but his hulking sword as well. Once you stat up, you'll be devastating enemies with its incredible damage. The best part is once you beat the final boss and receive the Souls Brand, you can fuse the two together for the single best sword in the entire game. Number 9 Lies of P is the most recent game on this list and such is one of the more difficult games to analyze. Patches are still being released and the Soulsborne community hasn't had as much time to dissect it. Weapons are also interesting because in Lies of P every weapon is made up of a blade that determines damage and elemental aptitude and a handle that determines moveset and stat scaling. It's an ingenious system, but this means that we are rating both a blade and handle. The most broken blade in the game is the Bone Cutting Saw Blade. This is the longest blade with the highest base damage in Lies of P. Combined with handles that scale in motivity or technique, like the Krat Police Baton Handle or the Dancer's Curve Blade Handle, will give you a fast move set capable of destroying enemies. The most broken handle in Liza P is the Glaive Booster Handle, which is the single best technique handle in the game, and can be acquired very early on. It has an impressively fast move set with a charge attack that can dash towards the enemy, as well as a fable art that can melt bosses HP. I know what you're thinking, put these two together and you have one of the best technique weapons in Liza P. But the Glaive Handle also pairs well with the Salamander Dagger as well. Number 8 Considered to be the game that put Miyazaki on the map, Dark Souls is one of the most beloved titles in this genre. There are many weapons that are amazing for a playthrough, such as the Uchikatana or Claymore, but the Black Knight Halberd is one of the quote unquote easy mode weapons of the game. Now it's a little tricky to get, you need to make your way down to this area and fight a knight at the end of the path. Once defeated you have a small chance of receiving the Halberd. If you're lucky, you will be graced with a long, hard-hitting weapon with an untouchable moveset. Sure, towards the end game, it will level out somewhat, but for the majority of Dark Souls, you will practically be untouchable. Number 7 Code Vein is considered anime Dark Souls, and for good reason. EO's absolute waifu material and the customizability of your avatar is on par with most MMOs. It's also one of the easier Soulsborne titles on this list, and thus a great entry point for newcomers. In Code Vein, you receive some epic boss weapons, some of which could have easily made this list. But an early to mid-game weapon that unintentionally breaks this title is the Zwinehander. 
The Zweinander is a colossal blade with long reach and a fairly fast, at least for its size, moveset. But what makes this thing absolutely broken is that with the right build, it can block 100% of physical attacks in Code Vein. Aside from guard break moves and some elemental chip damage, you will be able to block every attack be it a standard enemy or a boss. With this strategy, the Zweinhander turns an already easy title into a cakewalk. Number 6 Dark Souls 2 is a divisive title. Miyazaki was not the director of this game and such it feels as if it panders to fans of the first title. That being said, many of the gameplay mechanics players loved in Elden Ring started with this title, and because of this, the community has slowly come around to it. Now, there are a lot of hefty and epic looking weapons in Dark Souls 2, but funny enough, one of the best weapons for your entire playthrough is the Humble Rapier. This early game weapon can be found and nearly fully upgraded within the first 20 minutes of the game. With the right accessories, its usefulness will only continue to improve throughout your playthrough. The Rapier's poke the enemy and block moveset is flat out cheap, and its surprisingly high damage potential just creams enemies. You can upgrade to the Ice Rapier once you get the DLC, but ultimately it's pretty similar to the Rapier. Number 5 Bloodborne is a masterpiece among masterpieces. Its grisly Lovecraftian world and story are unforgettable. Never has the fear of unfathomable beings been captured so beautifully. On top of this, Bloodborne also introduces the Trick Weapon. Each weapon in this title has both a normal form and a trick form, and learning the best ways to use those forms is key to breaking Bloodborne. Now, the Saw Cleaver, which is a starting weapon, could easily have made this list, but its counterpart, the Saw Spear, ends up being its superior. This blade can be obtained in the first area, and once gemmed with an elemental gem, its arcane scaling will apply to its attack. The reason the Saw Spear is so broken is because of its serrated edge in both normal and tricked form, and its R1, L1, L1 combo, which is the single best attack combo in Bloodborne. Given the Fire Paper and Beast Pellets, you will be absolutely unstoppable for your entire playthrough. Number 4 Going back to Dark Souls 1, there is a more easily obtainable weapon that happens to be the most popular blade for playthroughs. The Zweinhander can be found just down from the first bonfire you reach. It's literally just sitting there. This slow but devastating blade is absolutely busted as it dishes out some of the highest damage in the game. But that's not exactly what makes it broken. You see, the Zweinhander's move set makes it easy to stun lock most enemies, breaking the poise and keeping them in a never-ending state of stun and damage. Following guides, it's also possible to fully upgrade the Zweinhander very early on making it the best weapon in Dark Souls 1. Number 3 Dark Souls 3, for many, was a return to form. It took the lessons learned in both Dark Souls and Bloodborne and mixed them together to make the best game in the trilogy. Now, there are a plethora of busted weapons in this title, which is no surprise, but the single best weapon in the game is the Lothric Knight Sword. This is the best one-handed blade in the game with the longest reach and a fast, devastating moveset. It can be obtained in the early game along with its lesser but still busted counterpart, the Lothric Knight Greatsword. Once infused, the Lothric Knight Sword's broken two-handed or one-handed moveset and range will destroy any enemy, including every boss. It is simply the best weapon in the game, period. Number 2 Elden Ring is probably the most popular title on this list, and for good reason. It took the Dark Souls formula and made it open world. Because of this, so many of the best weapons are almost immediately obtainable. Now the weapon I chose here is actually more of a mid-game weapon as it's locked behind some requirements in order to obtain it. But you will receive this katana before the hardest boss fights in the game and can make do with the Uchi katana until then. The Rivers of Blood Katana is so broken that even after being patched twice, this sword still busts this title wide open. The Rivers of Blood Katana has a fast, unblockable moveset with an incredibly spammable special move and the second highest bleed damage build in the game. With the right accessories and the Blasphemous Blade, you can actually heal yourself while you dish out damage. 
Even post patches, this is the single best weapon in the game and is a blast to use. Number 1. Bloodborne has many weapons that play to the strengths of this title. Most enemies are beast types, so serrated edges and fire damage make up the best way to hit the highest numbers on bosses. Because of this, the best weapon in Bloodborne, and possibly the best weapon in all of Soulsborne games, is the Whirligig Saw. This DLC weapon can be obtained just as you enter the mid game. It has a crazy move set, but what truly sets it apart is the move that holds the blade out in front of the player and grinds down the enemy's HP bar with minimal stamina usage while stun locking them from attacking. This single attack, boosted with beast pellets and fire paper, trivializes the game, and anyone who takes the time to learn its move set will be greeted with the true easy mode of Bloodborne. And that's my list, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to my Patreon supporters who have helped me build this channel up over the past few months. If you would like to become a Patreon member, hit the link in the description below and check out my exclusive anime tier list. Also, if you join the pro tier, you can request your own list today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.